Thank you for taking a free 30-day trial of Portfolio Builder. By default, you'll be set up with our basic setting. However, if you use this chat with us box, we can upgrade your free trial to the gold or diamond level. In this video, I'm going to quickly summarize the overall process and then jump into the nitty gritty details. And I'd also like to point out that you can sign up for up to one free coaching session per day. This is for paid and free trial members alike. There's a few quick things you need to understand before we get started. First of all, our entire platform relies on using the Google Chrome browser. So if you're using Safari or Firefox or Internet Explorer, it's not going to work. In step one, we instruct you to download the Chrome browser. In step two, we're going to make sure that you did register with a Gmail account. Because we use Google services, they allow us to host your spreadsheet and all of the complicated algorithms that power the portfolio for free. So if you didn't use a Gmail account, you should just go back to the homepage portfoliobuilder.io and re-register with a Gmail account. And the next thing we're going to teach you how to do is to create a profile. Here's what's really catchy. If you can just click this, it'll automatically open up your email as well as your portfolio builder. On the right tab, this goes straight to my money manager so I know immediately with two clicks what I need to do to balance out my portfolio. So the first step on this whole process is to get set up with the right tools. We need Google Chrome, we need to have a Gmail account. We want to use this little feature right here to create a new profile that's going to have settings saved to automatically open your portfolio. Now step six is where we get to actually installing our Chrome app. So on step six you're going to have to click this link and you can see I've already installed it. And you can tell I installed it because you can see right here this is the email that was automatically sent to me when this email registered for a free trial. And if I open Sheets, I can go to here, click on Add-ons, and you can see I have Portfolio Builder 1.3. And there's two options. Do a data update, which will update how many coins you should own per cryptocurrency, or I can check for new coins. And if there's any new coins added to the portfolio, it will automatically add it to your spreadsheet. Now if you ever want to uninstall the app, it's really easy. Just click that, manage, remove, and now what I can do in this tutorial is show you how to reinstall it. So this Chrome app is critical to making our whole platform work. This will pop up. Now it's important that you actually click the account that you registered to Portfolio Builder with. If you have multiple accounts associated to a single Chrome app, it's going to mess up our software and not allow you access. Click right here and then click Allow. And now you can see it is updated. So let's take a quick look at a brand new spreadsheet. So you can see with a refresh I now have Portfolio 1.3. So the first step to do is to figure out how much Bitcoin your total portfolio is going to start with. Now you can go enter all of your historical data into our spreadsheet, but for many of you, you haven't kept great records, you have everything all over the place, and the commission cost to completely liquidate your whole portfolio, go to Bitcoin, is going to be about a tenth of a percent. So for most of you, the easiest thing to do is take today's price on Bitcoin, take your total number of Bitcoins, go to the money manager, select the right setting. If you are a daredevil and you like risk, you don't mind 20, 30, 50, even 70% drawdown, you have consistent income to continue to fuel your portfolio, super risky might be a setting you like. For those of you who don't have new income, who do not like to see huge swings in value, the risky or, s or smart setting is a better option. And we'll take a look at how both of those portfolios look. So I'm going to trigger an update. 
And you can see right off the get-go, it's going to immediately tell me how many coins to buy or sell per coin. And this portfolio was set to the basic setting, which is the default for everyone starting their free trial. And again, if you do want your 30-day trial to be at the gold or diamond level, just contact our support team and we're happy to upgrade that for you. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of coins and the more advanced your portfolio, the more work you're going to have to build it out. In the basic program, we are holding pretty much every big name cryptocurrency in the game, except for EOS and Tron. Uh, and that's because Abra, the phone app that has easy access to all of these coins, does not support those two tokens. In the gold membership, we expand you to all of these blue tokens plus those yellow tokens, which is what Binance holds. And if you go to the diamond level program, we're actually trying to get the coins before they go to a big exchange. And so we do that through idex.markets and in the future other DAP platforms. So let's take a look at what sort of risk profile Super Risky has for a basic setting at this point in time. So if I go over here to the position manager, I can now look at column F to get an idea of what my portfolio would hold. So you can see in the super risky setting, I have almost no Bitcoin and no USD Tether. So all of the money is held in Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin. The smallest position is 0.8% in Dogecoin and Lisk while the biggest position currently is in Stellar and Bitcoin Cash. Now, let's see what happens if I switch this to the risky setting. And remember, you can change your risk profile at any point in time. So if you feel like the market has finally gone very bullish and you want to take on more risk, you can set that setting to super risky and if you think the market has more downside ahead but you don't want to not have any positions in there you can run on the smart setting so you can see in our basic portfolio if I go to the risky setting we're still putting 25 percent of our portfolio into cash so if you did start in the super risky setting at this point in time by switching over you're taking a quarter of the profits out of the cryptocurrency market and a fifth of the profit into a more secure cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, which has a lot less volatility. Now, we still do have some exposure to other coins. We have 15% in Ripple, 9% in Bitcoin Cash, 5% in Litecoin. But these coins down here are going to much smaller position sizes. And if I go back to the Money Manager and again hit the Smart setting and do a trigger update, let's see what happens on the basic portfolio with this setting. And now as you can see, more profit has been poured into the cash position with the 33% USDT and 36% of our portfolio is now held in Bitcoin. Now at some point when the market gets too overvalued, you may pull the plug on the entire cryptocurrency market and go into a complete cash position. But it's oftentimes when the market's going straight up that the biggest returns are to be made, but at the same time, the biggest risks are being taken by investors. So what's the best strategy to use right now? For me personally, when I see Bitcoin crashed from a high of 20,000 down to 8,000, to me that looks like a near bottom. And I know at any point in time it could crash another 50%. But in general, when the markets had a 50% or larger correction, that's when I like to run the super risky strategy, knowing very well I may encounter lots of volatility. And as prices get expensive and are breaking well beyond new highs, that's when I would switch to the smart setting. But that strategy is not the best bet for everyone. If you're the type of person who just does not like to see big swings in volatility, you hate losing money, the smart setting's the best bet because at any point in time, if the market does pull back, you will have cash on the sidelines to refill the positions that have lost significant value. 
So now what I've done is change the member profile to gold. And let's go through the settings again just to get a feel for what the different portfolios look like. So I'm going back to Super Risky on gold and triggering a new update. As you can see, we once again have a very small Bitcoin position at just under 2%. But now Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash are all below 5%. And the new stars are emerging coins like EOS, sitting at a 9.8% position. Now, if you followed my videos, I'm definitely skeptical of EOS, but the trading volume is really dictating my strategy. And right now, the best bet on the super risky setting is this 9% position on EOS. If we scroll down, you'll see you have very small positions on a number of coins. But sometimes the position is so small that you wouldn't even be able to place the order in Binance. In fact, the smallest order in Binance is about $16 right now at 0 .0002 Bitcoin. So what you'll notice if we scroll down is that there are some $0 positions like Request Network. That's not because it has no trading volume and therefore should have no position, but its position size is smaller than 0 .002 Bitcoin and therefore it's just zeroed out so you don't have to worry about it. So even though we may show a total listing of 142 coins, you're not going to have that many coins in your actual portfolio. And if I were to drop this down to a single Bitcoin, you'll notice that a lot of positions will disappear because now my, position, my portfolio size is one-tenth of what it used to be. And so you can see a lot of positions that did make sense for the $80,000 portfolio did not make sense for the $8,000 portfolio. Let's go ahead and switch to the smart setting and see what happens. So once again, all of the profits have been pushed up to the top. A third of our portfolio is now in cash. Another third is writing the less volatile Bitcoin. And while we still do have positions in leading cryptocurrencies, it's a lot smaller. So we still have a index, uh, but on the smart setting, it's a much more accurate index that's really truthful to what the real market is providing. And with a safety blanket in cash so that there, if there is a pullback, you have cash to rebalance your portfolio. In general, the risky setting and the super risky setting are weighing down the value of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin, which are all available from Coinbase, and betting that the lesser available coins will have the bigger returns in the future. Okay, now one more thing. Let's look at the super risky on the diamond level. And it looks a lot like the other portfolios, except you'll see the positions are now reaching down into IDEX.Markets. Now, a lot of these positions are currently small, but what's important is that IDEX.Markets will have the big coins being launched prior to them moving up to Binance. So at this point in time, when I just made this portfolio, all of the big positions from IDEX have already made it to Binance and therefore have been moved into the Binance exchange. So what's important is that we're constantly tracking the trading volume of all these hot new coins so that when the trading volume does start to speed up, you'll be able to follow the money and increase your position size as its popularity rises. Okay, so that's a rundown on the various strategies and different difficulty levels. Let's take a look at how the system actually works. So in the money manager, we, the position manager, first of all, is really just an overview of what's going on in your portfolio. It's tracking the all-time profit loss of your total portfolio and of all transactions on a single coin. Your money manager is used to tell you how to rebalance your portfolio at any time and to select your strategy uh, between super risky, risky, and smart. So coin difference is in column C. However, typically you'll be either buying or selling Bitcoin or Ethereum to fill these positions. And in general, I recommend buying the yellow and blue coins with Bitcoin 
and then you'll have no choice but to buy the turquoise green coins with Ethereum. And so you'll know exactly how much to spend to buy the right amount of coins to make all of these transactions possible. Deposits refer to converting fiat funds such as US dollars into cryptocurrencies. But don't be confused. If you deposit your US dollars into Coinbase and then you deposit your bitcoins into Binance or ABBA or some other exchange, that wasn't a real deposit. Only the first time that we convert our fiat money into a cryptocurrency will we account for it in this tab called deposits. And we're also not tracking our transfers. Transferring a coin from one place to another doesn't change how many coins you have or the value of those coins. So we don't worry about that. And a withdrawal is not when we're withdrawing coins from Binance and putting it into our nano ledger. That's the same thing as a transfer. Withdrawals are really meant to track taking a cryptocurrency and cashing it out to your bank account. And we count your withdrawals as part of your profit in your ROI. Now I should note that on the deposit tab, the only rows you'll fill out will be in yellow, column A, D, and E, as well as G. The purple columns will provide an error if you try to type into them and are not meant to be edited yourself. When you trigger an update, it will automatically fill those out. And with draws, it's the same thing. Don't touch the purples. Touch column B, E, G, H, and if you like, you can edit I and J. Moving on, we have the USDT selling tab. Now this is really important for Abra users. They will actually let you convert USDT into almost any different coin you like. Whereas all other exchanges are limited to the coins listed right here. So in general, if you are doing any trading, try to do all your trades between Bitcoin or Ethereum. If you do happen to do some USDT trading, then these are the coins that we support currently. And so in this tab, we are selling USDT Tether to purchase a new coin. So we can see in column D, it wants to know how many Tether coins were sold. Column H, it wants to know how many new coins were purchased. And in column K, the date. Now, if you had a commission cost, you would put that into column G. What's important to note is that by simply filling out column D, H, and K, our software will automatically figure out the rest of the columns that are in purple. Now, also note that if you buy a USDT Tether, it will cost a dollar, and when you sell it, it will sell also for a dollar. So it's a wash in terms of tax obligations. However, the commissions accrued in column G can be added together at the end of each year and deducted against your profit. So keep that in mind. Now the same story is not true when we're buying USDT because when we're buying it, we're typically doing it with another cryptocurrency that had a different buy and sell price. So for example, I might have bought a Bitcoin for $1,000 then sold it later on for $8,000 and thus delivered a $7,000 profit. And that's what we're calculating in column K. When filling out the USDT buying tab in column C, we can make a note of our location. In column D, we'll be referencing how many coins were sold, whether it was a Bitcoin, Ethereum. If you want to search, you can type in the coin like that or you can simply scroll. But in column E, we're mentioning how many of the coin was sold, Bitcoin, Ethereum, NEO, etc. And then in column H, how many coins were bought. Now in this tab, column I is static. It's always a dollar. In column J, you're gonna have to go back in your history and look how much you paid for your Bitcoin. The best strategy for taxes, in my opinion, is first in, first out. 
So in this particular case, I would be looking at my very first Bitcoin purchase, the date and the price, so that when I went to sell it for US dollars, I can track the profit right here. Now, if I had bought it for 8,000 and now it's selling at 7,000, obviously that would be a $1,000 loss, which is also useful for your tax reporting. Most of your trading history will occur in the Bitcoin selling tab. That's because we'll buy one Bitcoin and then break it down into dozens, potentially hundreds of different altcoins. And to do so, we only have to know column C, where we sold the Bitcoin, column D, how many Bitcoins were sold, column G, if there was a commission, what the commission cost was, Column H, how many of the new coin we purchased. And so if you scroll down, you'll see every coin that is currently supported. And if you use Control F, you can also search for coins and automatically find a certain coin. Column K would again be the original cost you paid for your Bitcoin. Not the cost you paid for selling it today, but the cost you paid to buy it in the past. And then column N refers to column K, when did you originally buy the Bitcoin? And then column O is the date of actually converting the Bitcoin into the altcoin. By using this column O, column H, and column D, when you trigger an update, we will automatically calculate the price per coin sold on both sides of the trade, as well as your profit loss and your days held. So the days held is really whether it's a long-term or short-term capital gain. If you hold for over a year, your tax rate will be much lower, and thus we make it very easy for you to track that. Now another quick tip, if you do have lots of little trades, you can easily summarize them into a single line. Just add up the total coins sold, and the total coins bought, and the general date, and it will average that out. There's no way to manipulate your overall return on investment, so this method makes it very easy and very fast to keep track of every single transaction, including the profit loss. Now let's say it's time to switch from the super risky setting to the smart setting and pull some profits out of all these altcoins. That's when we're gonna be buying Bitcoin with altcoins. And so once again, we'll mark down the location, the number of coins sold to buy Bitcoin. And in column H, how many Bitcoins were purchased? Column G, if there was commission cost. And now we have to reference back to this tab. So we wanna know how much did we initially pay for the altcoin? Well, you're gonna find that back here in the Bitcoin selling tab where you first bought it. So you can reference your original cost per coin. Column in again will be the original date of buying the altcoin, which you'd find in the Bitcoin selling tab. And then the final date would be when you're actually making this trade that you're inputting right now. And that's where we're gonna calculate your price points for column I and column F. So you trigger your update and all of this will automatically fill in. The same thing is true for Ethereum selling and Ethereum buying. And again, for Ethereum, the coins that I highly recommend you trade with are these here. And of course, you'll have no option but to do that with IDEX.Markets. So that's a general gist of it. We're gonna go into some nitty gritties about actually filling out the spreadsheet in a moment. But let's go back to our getting started guide. So you, to recap, we started off by ensuring that we have Google Chrome browser. And if not, you can download it here. We're making sure you did register with a Gmail account. If not, just go back to the homepage and re-register. We're making sure that we're creating a unique Chrome browser profile. This will ensure that you don't have multiple Gmail accounts in one profile, which can really mess up our software. And we're also gonna teach you how to save the portfolio link so that when you open your profile, it'll automatically open your portfolio up every time you start your computer. Step six, we had to download the Chrome app. 
In step seven, we're teaching how to install the Chrome app. In step eight, we're just going to go find our portfolio in our Gmail and open it up. Step nine is all about learning all these different settings, which I just reviewed in detail. And so the last step is really learning how do you go about buying all these tra uh, coins. And so much of what we just covered in the video is written in detail right here in step nine. But once we get to step 10, we start talking about the best places to buy and store your coins. And this is where there's some different options. So we have a, a few recommended options. Really, it's Abra for the basic strategy or Binance for gold and diamond. Now, you can use Binance for the basic strategy as well. But you're going to learn that I recommend quite a bit of security steps to really protect yourself with Binance. And it's actually going to include buying a special phone and laptop just for your cryptocurrency trading. I really don't recommend you setting up all your security on your personal cell phone that you take out and about with you. It just doesn't make sense. And you also shouldn't be running your trades off a computer that you use for everyday use. Who knows what kind of malicious viruses may still be on there. So at the very bottom of this article, you'll see that there's 10 recommended readings. And if you skip any of it, you're really doing yourself a disservice. We spent about three months building these tutorials and really writing out every little thing you need to do if you want to trade on Binance. And it really boils down to how to protect your capital and end up storing it in a safe place outside of Binance after you buy your coins. And if you're doing the diamond level program, you're really going to need to read number seven, where we teach you how to use IDEX markets to buy Ethereum dApps. So this is a lot to get going with. You certainly can get going immediately, but I definitely recommend you take advantage of our free coaching sessions. They're completely free. You can have up to one per day. And it's easy to self-schedule right here with this little widget. Okay, now at this point in the video, I'm going to give you a quick teaser of all the different tabs that are located in these reads. So you can see all the information you'll be able to consume if you just take the time to do it. Okay, so the first link is how to buy, sell, store your coins safely. And if we scroll through here, uh, we're going to talk about the common ways people do lose their money. Some very well-known people have lost a lot of money. I have a checklist. We have a security device. This little guy costs about 15 bucks, but will make it impossible to access your Gmail account without it. So if some remote hacker gets your password, it won't matter because without this device, they can't log in. This is where I like to end up storing coins for the long haul. Abra acts a lot like this. It's a phone app. Uh, however, this is very secure, supports more coins than Abra, and you actually control the private key. These cost about $80 and are very smart. Now, I also don't store any passwords on a computer. I write them down on paper in two different notebooks and store one copy in a very safe place. So that's the Getting Started article. Here's the security checklist for trading cryptos. So again, we're teaching you not to write down your passwords on your computer in a file, but rather on a piece of paper, getting a unique phone, getting a unique laptop, getting these security devices to make it very hard to hack your system. Some tips for calling your phone company so that someone can't steal your identity. That's actually the number one way people are stealing coins is by stealing your identity why you might consider a special internet stick just for your laptop that's not shared by your family, why you shouldn't log into public Wi-Fi networks while traveling, and again, saving all this information safely in a safe. In this article, we can look at the Abra app. This is a very fast and free method that's very secure, doesn't require having a secure email or phone, and is really a great technology. I wouldn't use it for portfolios much larger than $10,000 though, and that's because they still hold the private key, so we still do have to trust them. And if you're very 
skeptical, then just go with Binance. But in this tutorial, I show you how to download the app and build an entire portfolio very quickly. In this article, we are going through the detailed setup for a hacker-proof email. And Gmail has some really cool features that not a lot of people know about, including some nuclear options to have a single backup secret key, uh, a lot of different settings. And so this is actually a two-part guide that takes you step-by-step -step to build an extremely secure email account with Gmail. Another option is ProtonMail, but it's still, in my opinion, nowhere near as secure as this particular setup. And here it goes on to part two. So you can see it is extremely detailed. May seem extreme, but once you read through all the settings, you'll see how this is a very optimized hacker proof email setup and why your email is the single most important thing to keep secure when working with centralized exchanges. In this article, we, be, we talk about how to set up a hacker proof iPhone. And again, it's very detailed. And it actually requires that you have a hacker-proof email. So these two steps work really well when you do them in tandem. Uh, because we want our iPhone to be just as hacker-proof as our email, as it's another point of security risk. In this article, we teach you how to set up accounts at popular exchanges. Now, this current build is really focused on Binance. But I do recommend you take the time to set up a Poloniex account and even a Bittrex account just so you have some backups. Poloniex will be useful when we actually want to short the market. So at some point in time, I will be telling my members when I've completely sold all of my Bitcoins and actually have flipped to a short strategy expecting a crash. And so in this article, we go through all the steps to create your account and make it secure. In this article, we discuss how to use my Ether wallet with idex.markets where we will be purchasing ERC20 tokens and Ethereum dApps. This is only a four minute video to learn the whole process inside out, but below that's a 30 minute video which includes their CEO and other guest speakers talking about the future of exchanges related to decentralized exchanges. In this article, we talk about the Nano Ledger S, and this is a bunch of videos from the Crypto Dad. He has very good educational how-to technical videos that will teach you how to securely store a lot of our cryptocurrencies outside of Binance on a Nano Ledger S. Now, there are a few coins not held at Binance that are held at Abra, and those specific coins, if you don't want to purchase them from somewhere like Bitrix or Poloniex, you can also get them from sites like Shapeshift and Changely, which are also somewhat built into the Nano Ledger S. This has a very big article about the history of these two exchanges and videos on how to use them. They're very easy and will allow you to essentially send coins from your Nano Ledger S to their website. They will exchange it to the token you like and deposit them straight back to your Nano Ledger S. In this link, we have spreadsheet tutorials. So if you want the nitty gritty on how to export your trading history from popular exchanges and then read those exports so that you can fill out your spreadsheet with all your past history, then this is going to be your article. Now, I really don't recommend doing that if I were you, I would just sell my positions into one Bitcoin position, make a single deposit in the deposit tab, and then start from scratch. That way you can see how your portfolio is performing from this day onward and save yourself a lot of headaches. You'll have a lot less stuff going on in here and a lot less work. Some bonus articles, how to avoid paying taxes and commission costs. So we go through how to do a limit order at GDAX and pay no commission costs. Very simple, but will save you some money. Here we talk about setting up Coinbase and GDAX. This is for new folks who are just getting started. We have a two-part series on that. Here's a bunch of horror stories of people who did lose their coins. So a lot of people have been robbed 
This will teach you what happened. Uh, however, all the other educational material will make sure it doesn't happen to you. And again, if you're feeling overwhelmed, stop what you're doing right now and schedule a free webinar. So we really appreciate your help. Supporting the Portfolio Builder team and look forward to serving you.